Hi everyone, uh, North Jersey gardening here. I'm giving you another update today on all the vegetables um, and herbs and legumes that I planted uh, not long ago. Well, in different sessions, so I have different uh, stages of growth going on. Um, so these are the um, um, the yellow squash, the crookneck zucchini that you saw me up on not long ago. They were overcrowded in uh, one tiny container, all of three of them together. Uh, and look already, I have a couple of buds and a nice uh, flower that started to open just today. Very pretty. And the bees and bumblebees and even the wasps are going crazy uh, trying to get at them. I have to stay out of their way. But these are the three yellow crookneck zucchinis I have going. And right next to them, uh, having a bit of a success after a few failures, um, this is the moringa tree. Uh, one, the tallest one here, had sprouted um, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it was by itself, and then a few days after that, these two followed along. Uh, so I only thought I had only the one here. And actually it was in a smaller container, I, I up-potted it, thinking it's the only one. Um, Moringa, as they say, has, um, uh, they, they produce um, nice long taproot, uh, which is true. I up-potted it from that um, container. It was still deep, but uh, that taproot was reaching all the way to the bottom. So I up-potted it into this long cardboard container <laughs> with a plastic bag inside. Um, it's like a good foot long or so, um, but I thought it was the only one, as I'm up potting I wasn't being careful with the surrounding soil around it, thinking the other seeds did not uh, make it, but a couple of days after I up potted it, these two showed up, which I'm happy about, but now I'm concerned about uh, separating them, I don't want to break the roots. Um, I had attempted to, to uh, get these to grow from seed two or three times before um, and uh, was not successful but uh, this, it looks like it's gonna happen this time I think they need sun and heat um, uh, like more natural sun daylight sun than uh, artificial light for them to uh, thrive I think I'm not sure but uh, I'm happy they're uh, making it and I'm letting them enjoy some sun today today uh, it's gonna reach almost 80 degrees uh, uh, it's crazy so um, everything came outside again uh, so I'm gonna try not to make this uh, a too long of a video <laughs> but I'm giving you a quick update on everything these are the mystery tomatoes that had sprouted along with the peppers um, I moved them out also so I'm not sure what they are but they're growing very very nicely um, and I think these two are going to go to one to my dad's and one to my brother. Uh, they like to grow also tomatoes, but they have uh, um, their tomato seeds sprouting um, beginning last week, so everything is very small on them. Uh, it was crazy enough, and I started in July with these guys. I mean, uh, January. January 5th, I started seeding these guys. Uh, there were plenty, a lot, like over 20 seeds, but only five made it. And of these um, five, these two are the mystery ones. I have no idea what uh, variety they are. Uh, but earlier today, since the weather was nice, <laughs> and it's not going to be cold the next few nights, um, I planted these guys in the ground. So this guy is the black from Tula. Uh, that you remember. Also this one was seeded um, January 5th and he's doing great. He's enjoying the space and I have him closer to the house in this little stone curved uh, raised garden bed. So hopefully I have some things all around so the deer and the animals won't come and chew at it. I'm gonna put a better fencing later on. Uh, but he's doing good. It's been a few hours and he's growing uh, nicely in that container I wanted to give him more room and I put him in the ground the temperature is still gonna drop to the 40s uh, the next couple of nights and one night 
late next week they're saying but I think this is it they can handle um, it's not gonna drop that low of a temperature for a long period just a couple of hours in the middle of the night before the sunrise and um, the temperature warming up again so these two guys were also in the same container together I'm not sure what this one is I'm I was I thought it was um, Hungarian wax which is what this guy is because the peppers growing upwards look at him so he was in a little plastic container already flowering and this guy been in the going indoor and outdoor being kept safe uh, for a long time um, it's definitely time to put him in the ground which I did and his hopefully he will grow his stem is nice and thick and healthy and the leaves are nice and healthy also so hopefully the next few flowers will start to produce peppers also this guy was in the same container um, as the Hungarian wax so I'm thinking it's the same the leaves are similar um, but the flowers are turned downwards instead of upwards uh, but we'll see they may still change the pepper may still grow up like the Hungarian wax does um, so these are these two guys the peppers and over there the okras in their container were uh, leaning and wilting um, outgrowing their container also so I put them right in front of the tomato and they get a lot of sun they're south facing so even as the tomato grows the um, okras will catch up and then they will reach for the sun and get a lot of sun uh, whatever they need it will not obstruct their um, their way so right in front here they still haven't come out it's still too early for them I have some strawberries and I think I gave you an update on this guy here that's a hazelnut and in the back I don't think he's gonna make it that's why I put the tomato close to him but if he does uh, should be okay uh, is a type of berry I forget what kind of a berry uh, but he hasn't there's no sign of budding or anything on there and I tipped uh, broke the tip off it's quite dry so I'm disappointed but we'll see maybe he'll still come back um, and up over there in front of the house I have a little greenhouse with a few things that still need protection it actually gets really hot in here um, I have to make sure I kept some of the zucchinis outside I'll show you in a bit uh, along with the moringa and the other things that were wilting it gets too hot for them in here but I have more of the peppers right here the pepper fish um, Hungarian wax another one um, the chocolate habanero and a few others here so they're doing good and these I will um, start to plant out um, maybe by the end of this week or next weekend we we'll still have a couple of nights uh, in the 40s so I don't want to take a chance with all of them um, so I'll keep these uh, protected I don't need to bring them indoors anymore the greenhouse is doing its job taking care of them overnight the temperature drops to like the 40s but not for too long um, and it stays a little bit warmer in the greenhouse anyway so they're okay uh, this is the tray of the different varieties I planted I sowed also not long ago oh god I had a lot a lot of the kills none of them did anything uh, but I see one back there which is the oh no these are all the peppers I didn't plant too many peppers because uh, I already have so many growing um, but yeah I sowed a whole bunch more not a lot um, but so far none of them sprouted except this one which is the cayenne a tiny little seedling coming out over here the I have a blue lake bush bean but I have a whole bunch of them but only this guy came out I don't know what's going on it's been time enough for them to have sprouted 
Um, here I have the sugar snap peas. Also, again, I'm disappointed there should be like easily 12 or 15 seeds sprouting, but only these three here, these two are twins stuck really close together. And also here, I mean, this one is doing beautifully, this bean, which is the garden bean royal purple. But it's lonesome all by itself. Look how big it got. And right next to it, in the rows around it, there should be a whole bunch of other beans, but nothing other than this big guy has been going. Uh, right next door are the kales. The scarlet kale is doing great right here. This row, scarlet kale, beautiful. I'll show you also, I, I had two of the scarlet kales that I had sown um, a couple of months ago. They did really well. I actually had a whole bunch of them, but only the two survived. And today I planted them in the ground. They can handle the cooler temperatures. I'll show you in a little bit. Uh, but the whole bunch of these scarlet kales are doing well. And right next door, I have the mixed kale. It was a container with mixed kales, which have um, the red, white, and Siberian kales in this row here. Um, so hopefully I'll be able to identify them. But regardless, they will make the lovely salads and um, I will eat them. Okay, over here in the last two rows, um, I don't know what's going on, nothing sprouted. Uh, Swiss chard and the red orac, which I've attempted to sow multiple times, no success, but there is a success in the other tray. Um, I will show you in a second. Right, let me switch over and actually let me open the door to the greenhouse, it's getting really hot in here. So over here I have the cucumbers I sowed April 9th. So over here I have uh, the first row in the back, the lemon cucumber. I have maybe four. Next door I have um, regular cucumbers. I'm not sure what they're called but I got them from my dad and they're growing nicely. Uh, and the front row, I have the Armenian cu cucumber right there. And then over here, let me turn the tag around. Cucumber 8, I'm not sure what it is. I have to reread the package. Um, and next to it is a type of melon I'm attempting. Uh, and I see only one has sprouted right here. It's the very dim melon. One sprouted. So we'll see how that goes. Um, and the next row here. Uh, red cabbage. Nothing sprouted in this. <laughs> Empty row. Let me turn the tray around. So I can read them better. So the red cabbage and the bok choy did not do that well. I have two bok choys coming out, little sprouts, one here and one here. So we'll see, but this whole row is bok choy and right next to it is red cabbage. Uh, nothing sprouted. And also in the row next door is the parsley. Also nothing has sprouted yet, which is disappointing, I don't know why, it's weird. And next door in this one, a little better, much better success with the Swiss chard. These two rows here. Some slots are empty, but some of them are loaded. And next door, which I have had <laughs> quite a few disappointing failures, uh, is the red orac. So, but this is the stage where I get them at, and then they start to wilt and die down. Um, like I must have attempted this five times, this is the sixth time, so I'm not going to mess with them much, just keep them warm and give them water and hopefully they'll keep going. But this, this is how far I've gotten with them previously, all five previous times. Actually the last time nothing sprouted as I showed you a few seconds ago. And right here, <laughs> growing nicely and very quickly are the two types of um, radishes. Um, I have to start thinking of uh, putting them in the ground soon. So here I have the Crimson Giant on the left 
and the French breakfast on the right and they look similar even the base is a little bit red uh, but they're doing great so I'm very happy with this and I'll show you another update later on on the rest of the things going on and the two scarlet click kales I planted in the ground but the greenhouse is doing its job I'm very happy I got it and I'll give you another update as I move these out or up pot them or I think just move them into the ground since the weather is improving so nicely alright guys hope you're doing great and enjoying your gardening uh, let me know what's going on with you and I'll keep you posted thank you have a good one bye